Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Community Foundation of Mississauga, I'd like to offer all of you a warm welcome to today's session. My name is Jim Kennedy, and I'm your moderator for today's session. I'm a volunteer member of both the Corporate Partnership and Events Committee and the Endowment Committee at the Community Foundation. I'm also an investment and insurance advisor. I'd like to confirm that today's session is being recorded and will be available as an ongoing resource on the Foundation's website. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions, so please put them in the chat and we'll have them answered at the end of the presentations. The Endowment Committee of the Community Foundation of Mississauga was formed in order to assist the Foundation in its community work by educating and attracting donors to its endowment. Joining me on the committee are our chair, Tom Cooney, Cam Chari, Lisa Stick Maximik, Erica Tacklitz, Susanna Winsboro, Kevin Wong, and the foundation's president, Glenn Gamolka. We've designed our series to provide essential information that you need to know as you assist your clients and they consider their financial, legal, and tax plans and how they can impact the community through philanthropy. Today's session is the fifth in our series. Today, we welcome guests who are advisors, individuals, and charities. I'd like to now introduce Glenn and ask him to say a few words to open our session. Glenn, over to you. Thank you, Jim. Um, thank you for the uh, introduction this morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, very excited for today's session. We have a couple of great presenters this, this afternoon. So I hope you're gonna enjoy the session. Um, before I turn things over to our presenters, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of background about the Community Foundation for those of you who are, are not familiar with us. We are a grant-making foundation. We've been in existence for 20 years. We're part of a very large network of uh, national community foundations across Canada. There's about, actually there's about 200 now, um, each of which are committed to supporting their local communities. Our foundation has an endowment fund of about $27 million. And over the course of 20 years, we've granted about $21 million to local charities in our community. In addition to that, during the COVID pandemic, we distributed $2 million in relief funding to charities in our, in our community as well. Our foundation works on an endowment model, which means that every time somebody makes a donation or opens a fund with the foundation, the monies are permanently held and invested in our endowment. We have a professional investment advisor who manages all of our funding, uh, all of our funds on our behalf. And each year we use the proceeds from those investments, a portion of the proceeds are used for granting. And they can be either directed to a charity of the donor's choosing, or they can be distributed through the foundation's grant committee through a competitive grant application process. Either way, the donations are held in perpetuity and only the investment uh, income is used to uh, fund uh, our grants. So today we're talking about gifts of life insurance. So I thought I would just demonstrate and give you an illustration of what a gift of life insurance could mean for our community. So um, of course, when a gift of life insurance is donated to the foundation, we hold it until the, the policy pays out. Uh, upon payout of the policy, we would receive an initial investment as you see in year one of, in this case, it's a half a million dollars. In the first year, that policy would generate a small grant of about $24,000. Fast forward to 30 years. You'll see that after 30 years, the original um, donation of half a million dollars is still held, so we do not spend the principal. You'll see in addition to that, that the policy over the course of 30 years will have retained a portion of the earnings, and this is to protect against the um, uh, inflation. And so there's $362,000 in retained earnings, which means that that policy that was donated um, and realized in year one by year 30 is now worth $862,000. So it's generating larger and larger grants each and every year as it goes forward. And cumulatively over the course of those 30 years, that donation would generate a grant granting of almost a million dollars. So $974,000 in granting. So you can see how a donation of life insurance can have a transformative impact uh, on an issue in our community and can create a legacy of, of lifelong giving that goes on in perpetuity. At the foundation, our goal really is to assist our donors to achieve their charitable vision. And so we have a variety of funds that are available to donors and a donor can be as involved as they wish 
with their fund. So it could be anything from a simple donation online or a donor could open an unrestricted fund or participate in a field of interest fund and the foundation would take care of all of the investing and granting on their behalf. If a donor has a specific charity that they wish to support, they can designate a charity or multiple charities to be the beneficiary of their giving. And at the highest level of engagement, a donor can have what's called a donor advised fund, where they consult with the foundation every year and map out how their charitable giving will be distributed to the community. So if anybody has questions or, or interest in a fund with the foundation or would like to discuss uh, funds with me in more detail, please reach out to me directly. Um, I'm looking forward to today's session. And with that, I'm gonna turn things back over to Jim to introduce our speakers for this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, yeah, I'd like to introduce both our speakers, uh, Cam Chari and Saheed Syed. Uh, I'll start with Cam. Um, Cam joined the insurance industry in 1974 and has held many sales and management positions. Uh, he auth also authored a book called The Seven Stages of Planning, which I've actually read myself, and it's an excellent book. Uh, he holds the following designations, CGA, uh, Certified Financial Planner, RHU, RFP, um, CSC, STEP, and he is, as I mentioned before, a member of the Endowment Committee. He's also a member of the Estate Planning Council of Mississauga. Um, Cam was an avid cricket fan. Uh, and he always uh, played the game. Uh, he says he's retired now. Uh, he also enjoys golf, tennis, and table tennis. Um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Zahid Syed. Um, he's been helping executives, entrepreneurs, and professionals and wealthy family uh, eliminate unnecessary taxes and provide the legacy that they want for more than two decades. He's a million of, member of the Million Dollar Roundtable and the Conference of Advanced Life Underwriters. He holds his CLU, CHSC, and he's a Master Financial Advisor uh, of Philanthropy, and he has that designation. Uh, Zahid is a member of Advocates, and he's also a member of the Estate Planning Council of M Mississauga. So uh, I'd like to thank both of you for uh, being our speakers today, and I'd like to turn things over to Camp to start our presentation. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. I think I can do that in a minute. I have done that before, but uh, please bear with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, gosh, uh, I think I've gone past. Sorry about it. One second. Can you all see that? Okay, uh, basically, thank you, Jim. And I think you have been kind enough to say that I play golf, I play at it. But uh, other than that, everything is fine. So what I'm going to do is in the next 20 minutes, basically take you through charitable giving using life insurance. Zahid will follow me with specific examples of how that can be done. Uh, since I have only 20 minutes, I may have to go a little fast, but uh, Put any questions you have, put it on the chat line or, uh, you know, and then maybe in the end we can answer it. Okay. Now, basically the disclaimer is uh, just to say that this is only for general information. You should really contact your professional advisors before undertaking anything. Uh, and then of course the illustrations are very generic. Uh, and then the, the rates of life insurance and annuities depends on health conditions, they vary. Okay. Now, the question is why people donate? There are multiple reasons. One of the things, of course, is the helping the underprivileged. We all have that uh, in mind to help the underprivileged through na various national organizations, could be United Way, could be Red Cross, could be other things. So they do it through that on an annual or a one-time basis. Also to assist local community organizations. Uh, also, you're talking about community organization like the Misaga Foundation or uh, something different. Uh, supporting, of course, educational institution of their choice. People endow a lot of money to educational institution that there are, could be their alma mater or it could be something else. They do that. Or uh, sponsoring religious institutions could be church, synagogue, temple, whatever. 
So they do that and then that there's a benefit to that. And then of course, endowing hospitals and healthcare providers. That's another thing because even though the government provides funding, hospitals and healthcare providers are constantly looking for ways of having their capital projects and other things. So that's another other one. And then of course, uh, Glenn was talking about it, that creating a lasting legacy through private or public foundations. In order to create a public private foundation, you need a lot of money and there are a lot of restrictions the government puts you through. So a public foundation like the community foundation, things like that, for people who are not thinking of millions of dollars is a good way of doing it. And as Glenn mentioned, you can really then direct where the funds go to. What are the reasons for donating? I mean, is it, uh, why would they want to do it? It's of course, one of the main things assisting the maintenance of our social needs because the government alone cannot do everything. They, uh, they do provide assist, but they look for people to uh, also donate and do things. Uh, ensure the needs of the chosen institutions are met because without that, uh, the problem is some of the institutions cannot carry on. And of course, creating a legacy, again, as I go back to what uh, Glenn said, that's very important and uh, obviously the final one is also very important, the tax benefits. The government does give tax benefits in order to ensure that uh, you know, people do donate. The various ways of giving, and I'm here, here the focus today will be only on one thing, but cash donations on a periodic basis, you can make a lump sum cash donation transfer of public company shares. This is a very popular one. I think uh, Zaid is going to briefly mention something on this. Uh, transfer of real estate, real assets like land, buildings, et cetera. Uh, transfer of existing life insurance policy, which I'm going to focus on that and the payment of life insurance on death. The last five and six is going to be basically my focus today. And of course, there's also another thing using charitable gift annuities, which I'll briefly touch on. The question is why use life insurance? The biggest advantage of life insurance is that you can take out a large capital, uh, capital value for a small premium. So you can donate a large lump sum amount. <clears throat> Granted, you have to wait till the, in, the, the individual is uh, demise, but if you can have a number of these and uh, the statistically, there are people who are passing away over a period of time and then it really helps and as Glenn pointed out, that really accumulates and then that, that'll be a useful way of doing it. Uh, death benefits, the one of the things about life insurance is the only one I know of, I guess other than lottery winnings, where life insurance death benefit is tax-free, whether you hold it personally or through a corporation or charity, whatever it is, death benefit are tax-free, that's a big advantage. In addition to that, one of the things, uh, because the death benefit is tax free, generally, if you have life insurance personally, the premium is not a tax deduction. However, uh, the government says if the, pre if the ins insurance is held by the charity, they allow the premiums uh, as a tax deduction. In addition to that, if you have an existing, what we call as a permanent life insurance, and if that is transferred to the charity with any value, that cash or reserve value could also be a tax deduction. The other thing is a death benefit. Uh, let's say that they do not transfer the life insurance now. At death, they, then they use the life insurance uh, for the charity. Then the entire death benefit would qualify as a ta tax deduction. So you're talking about a million dollar policy. The estate has a larger, large capital in the need for pay tax and charges. It's a great way of doing it. And then you can donate it to different charities. One of the things which I notice is people say after a period of time, uh, I don't require the life insurance. My family is all taken care of. They are all, and we are empty nesters. We don't need the life insurance. So generally they give it up. So rather than doing that, one of the things they could consider is transfer that life insurance to the charity. And as I said, if there is any reserve, that becomes a tax deduction and the continuing premiums they pay is also a tax deduction. So 
before giving up the life insurance, they should consider uh, using that and transfer that to the charity of their choice, or uh, maybe keep going and then in the end, uh, give it to the charity through their will. So how, what are the ways of using life insurance? So I, the three ways really, funding the existing life insurance, you can transfer to the charity, as I mentioned before, if the existing, <coughs> excuse me, existing life insurance, you can transfer to the charity, or you can purchase a new life insurance and uh, one of the charity can be transferred to the charity and named as a beneficiary or funding life insurance at death, basically the lump sum through the will or directly. Now let's look at the first one, life insurance held by the, the charity. What are some of the conditions? Uh, charity should own the life insurance on the life of the donor. Can be an existing policy or a new policy, but if there is an existing plan, it, may, it must be transferred absolutely. What that means is there are two ways of transferring. If you borrow a loan from a bank, the bank will probably, you can back it up with a life insurance that's called a collateral. You collaterally transfer it because the end of the loan is repaid, you get it back. But in the case of charity, in order to get a tax deduction, you must transfer it absolutely, which, which implies the charity is the owner and also the beneficiary. Only in that case, the premium would qualify as a tax credit to the donor. Charity must be a registered entity to qualify for tax credit. And if you go to the website, they will list all the charities which, uh, uh, which, are, uh, which qualify. So that's easy to find out before you do that. Uh, and of course, here we are talking today about Mississauga uh, Community Foundation and they are a qualified charity. Once you transfer the charity, obviously no changes can be made without the consent of the charity. So that's a very important one. I, I, I already mentioned the last one, any reserve or cash value would qualify as a tax credit. Now, the second way of doing it is can do the life insurance at death. Life insurance would the charity as a beneficiary, in which case you just name the charity as a beneficiary. You don't get a tax deduction, but in the end, uh, the, cha the, charity, the money will go to the charity. The advantage of that is you, if you wanna change uh, uh, one from one charity to the other, you can change the beneficiary. Beneficiary designation can be changed. The more popular way of, uh, or the more common way, I should say not popular, common way of doing it would be, it's paid to the estate and directions given in the will. I think that is very prudent. I think well, most people should consider doing that uh, because I know that a lot of Canadians don't even have a bills, but if they have a will, they generally don't think about using their estate or uh, uh, bill to transfer the life insurance policy. That benefit then in this case can be used to fund a number of charity. If you're talking about a large life insurance, even though you don't get a tax deduction, uh, then you can fund a lot of charities there. Premium paid, of course, would not be eligible for the tax credit in this case, because the person who owns it, I just named the charity as a beneficiary or the estate or uh, the will as a beneficiary. Death benefit, however, qualifies a taxable tax credit. That's a big benefit because you're talking about a half a million, million dollar life insurance and the estate has a lot of taxes from RSPs and other things, then that can be used to offset that tax credit. The tax credit can be used to offset uh, the tax payable. And this gives, of course, complete control to the donor to make changes, the personal situation changes. Uh, the only, I guess, this is something which you have to think about. If the estate is named as a beneficiary, that could attract what we call as probate fees in Ontario, which is almost like a tax. It's about 1.5%, anything in excess of $50,000. Uh, if you want to avoid probate, there are ways of doing it. You can establish a trust to bypass probate, but that gets a little bit more complex. I just want to give you a brief illustration of what I was talking about. And Zahid will go through some detailed illustrations of various ways of using life, using life insurance for that uh, to benefit a charity. Let's say the death benefit of life insurance is $200,000. Cash or reserve value is $15,000, which means there's an inherent value of $15,000. The premium payable, let's assume, is $2,000. 
the adjusted cost basis or cost which is established by CRA, how I'm not going to go into how you get the, it's called the ACB or the adjusted cost basis. In this case, I'm assuming the marginal tax rate of 50% and the residency of the donor is Ontario. So as I said before, the donor must assign the policy absolutely to the charity. And once they make the transfer, the $15,000 will be eligible for the tax credit. And the continuing premium they pay, they can pay on behalf of the charity, they can, and that becomes a tax deduction. Yeah, of course, any unused, if the $15,000 cannot be used in that year, or even the 2000, it can be carried forward five years and used. Donor after the transfer, as I said before, cannot make any changes without the charity's consent. So from a tax point of view, uh, as you could see, on the $15,000 transfer, there is going to be a tax of $2,500. But that is offset by the $15,000 tax credit. So it's really a small price to pay the tax on time of transfer because uh, the reserve value was 15,000, the ACB was 10,000. So that $5,000 is taxable when you transfer, but that's offset by the $15,000 tax credit. I hope I made it clear. So in the event of death, the full $200,000 would be eligible for the tax credit. And the tax credit, the top rate, would be of course 100,000, 50%, $100,000. Uh, the credit can be carried back. Of course, it cannot carry forward. The person is dead. So we can carry back uh, from the uh, terminal year. The, the estate named beneficiary would attract probate fees. As I said, it comes to approximately 2250. It's not a lot of money, but uh, it's offset by the huge tax credit the person is going to get. One final thing I'm going to talk about, because this is sometimes used in terms of the low interest environment. Of course, we are going into a higher interest environment now, but even then, if the uh, GIC or whatever rates are uh, go up, the annuity rates also go up. So this is using an annuity, what we call as a back-to-back -back concept. Uh, for that, we use a specific type of annuity known as a prescribed annuity, which has certain tax benefits. Uh, the annuity income is used to fund the life insurance without losing the, inv the income from investment. And I will, I have a quick illustration. I will show you that in effect, in effect, in effective the donor has investments like a GIC or low yield investments, which they think they will never, they never convert into another income or anything else. Generally, they, of course, the donor has been goodwill to have the life insurance. There is one other final thing is it's called a gift annuity and I'm today I'm not going to talk about that and if you if you're really interested in that the, uh, your advisor can also help you there. This is just a quick illustration. Say donor age fifty has hundred thousand GIC yielding two point five percent. I think the interest rates are going up now, but two point five let's say it's twenty five hundred dollars. Um, premium for the hundred thousand dollars of life insurance, which I did a. a, a, a Quick thing, some time ago, the rates could have changed, but just give you an idea. Donor is in 50% tax rate. So the prescribed annuity's income is of $4,000 a year, but because the prescribed annuity has a special tax treatment, so because of that, only $900 of that will be taxable. So the GIC after-tax income, because as I said, GIC income is $2,500, so the GIC after-tax income is $1,250 at the top rate. Whereas the annuity after tax income is 3350. So as you could see there, that uh, you get more income at the same time, you're also able to pay for the, uh, uh, for the uh, life insurance. The drawback, a lot of people think it's a loss of capital in the annuity, that's a constant thing. It's almost like a reverse of a mortgage. And really this is what you use for funds that you would never be using. And for more information on that, there is a link there, which I have there. I think uh, you could, you know, because all of you have access to that, if you go and then take a look at it, it'll give you more information. Okay, with that, I think we'll defer the questions and thank you very much. And then I pass this on to Zahid. Thank you very much. So let's see here how we can add that on. Okay, here we go.
Can everybody uh, see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. I think everybody can see my presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my presentation is do good by doing good. So I'm going to uh, show you some of the um, uh, strategies that you can use that we have actually used for our clients and uh, how you can maximize and preserve your wealth. So having said that, there's, of course, disclaimer that this is for educational purpose only. And you can always give us a call or your advisor if you have a uh, any question um, to uh, to preserve your wealth, you just have must understand the tax systems in Canada. So now, in during your life and time of death, now we have a roll over to the spouse. If God forbid something happened to the first spouse, but at time, but if you have a last spouse, then everything goes into a pot, and because all the assets go into the pot, so each asset tax differently. For example, if you have a RIF. Our uh, RRSP, our pensions, they go almost up to 54%. Capital gain can go up to 27% in Ontario. Uh, corporate holding can go 47%. And as Cam said, the, everything goes through the will has to be probated. So there is almost 1.5% tax has to be um, Paid, uh, paid on that one. So as long as you understand how much tax you are paying, that's where we are going to save some money uh, by donating our uh, life insurance and all other assets. Now, of course, we live one and die twice. Uh, once we are uh, physically not there. And the second, of course, when the people stop talking about us. If you look at some of the hospitals and all that, people have name on their buildings. That's where they always leave a legacy and be remembered because uh, they want to make sure your uh, name lives on, and not only for uh, charities, but also for the families. We do the same thing. No, uh, I ask a lot of people uh, if they have, uh, you know, there are only three, uh, uh, three beneficiary to your state, family, charity, and the government. And I ask them which two they would choose if they have to. Most of the time I get the answer for family and charity and not uh, for the government, unless you are a socialist and you want to leave for the government. So uh, basically our purpose is to convert those tax taxes into ch uh, charitable donations and leave more for the family. Of course, simple math. If you live in uh, Ontario, uh, uh, sorry, depending on which province you live, but for the simple math, every $2 you donate, you save $1 in, uh, in taxes. And uh, for on the corporate side, every dollar you donate, uh, that gives you uh, $1 of uh, donation deduction on the corporate side. No, uh, Cam also have mentioned uh, gifting options. Uh, you can uh, give through will. Uh, you can give the cash, which is the least favorable. You can uh, give RSPs and RIFs and, of course, marketable securities. Now, with the marketable security, you have to understand that, you know, on the personal side, if uh, if you bought uh, something uh, at a lower uh, adjusted cost base are uh, those uh, stocks and now they have appreciated over that period, what we call a pregnant uh, capital gain. So then, uh, of course, when you donate uh, the stocks, you don't pay capital gain tax uh, because you didn't have the stock versus selling and donating. But on the corporate side, they actually give you a better benefit, which I'm going to show you if you have this, uh, investment in the corporate corporation and you donate those stocks that will give you extra advantage which I'll show you. On the life insurance of course is the most favorable uh, because uh, you can donate during your lifetime and also during your uh, after death of course. Now during your lifetime uh, if you donate a life insurance policy even sometime even term life insurance policy have sometime have a benefit if uh, charity is willing to take over that and convert it into permanent. Now uh, depending on your health and uh, how old are you? Uh, you know, we did one client uh, that they had almost uh, half a million dollars of term insurance when they were in their 60s. And there was a charity that uh, wanted to take over. They're not very healthy. We converted and I think almost um, around $290,000 actuary uh, value that uh, policy even was term and uh, the donor got $290,000 worth of a charitable receipt. Uh, same thing you can do with the, your permanent policies as Cam mentioned. Uh, so just to make sure before you cancel your term policy, uh, find out if there's a value to it. 
Now, uh, as I said, co on corporation side, let's take this example. Uh, you know, if you have uh, some stocks that have, uh, you know, over the period have grown, you bought for twenty thousand, or they are hundred thousand dollar, and if you donate, sell them, and then donate, then of course there's only $80,000 capital gain and taxable capital gain is $40,000. And you have to pay in higher tax bracket if you, uh, for 51.53, which is the passive income, around $20,000 a corporation has to pay taxes. And, uh, but if you donate stocks, then of course there's no capital gain. So whole $100,000 taxes see. So that's mean you are going to, corporation going to save $20,612 in extra savings uh, by just donating the stocks versus donating, uh, selling them and the, the, the donating. But I like this additional saving. So corporations are entitled to a CDA credit on the tax free portion of the capital gain. That means in this case, whole $80,000, you know, you can uh, have that capital gain tax free. So shareholder can remove $80,000 from the corporation totally tax free. Now take that savings and also 20,000 and now corporation can buy a big life insurance policy for the family, which can, of course, uh, at life expectancy, almost everything and go under through the CDA capital dividend account to the estate, totally tax-free. And of course, some of that money can be donated at that time to reduce your estate taxes. Huge advantage. If you uh, want to look at it on the corporation side, if you have some of those securities and you can buy life insurance to uh, replace that. RSP RIF tax bomb. Now, government totally discriminates against uh, single divorces and widows because they don't, they cannot pass that anything to their children without, uh, you know, paying. Uh, you have to pay taxes on it. And uh, we have actually one um, widow, and we are helping them right now. So it's one million dollar of, of RIF uh, avail available. So if she dies, that's mean whole $1 million in her tax bracket because all other assets are also going to come into play, $540,000 will go into taxes and only $460,000 uh, will be for years. Now, wealthy people takes RIF minimum. So if you look at so we advise the uh, we advise her a little bit differently. So look at here. So uh, she uh, donate uh, she has that one million dollar. So we said let's take the minimum withdraw approximately fifty three uh, thousand after taxes around twenty four thousand. So we bought a six hundred thousand dollar worth of life insurance policy for twenty five four thousand dollar premium because we're only taking a minimum from there. Now from there for six hundred thousand we donated. Uh, we put the beneficiary of 300,000 for the charity and 300,000 for uh, their hair, uh, her hair. Now at time of death, that's, this is what is going to happen. So 300,000 will go to charity, which will give you a uh, tax donation, which save you $150,000 in taxes in, on, to the state. And beneficiary will also get 300,000. So the whole $450,000 will be getting and also charity will get 300,000 plus whatever is balance left in the RIF. So if she would not have done it, family would only get 460,000. In this case, we were able to give 300,000 to the charity, 450,000 to the family, plus all the balance left in the RIF. So that's what we call do good by doing good. Now, of course, uh, there is um, charitable giving using a CPP benefit. And uh, now, um, uh, you know, we are working with a couple right now. Their husband and wife are 64 year old. They receive around eleven $1 hundred dollar uh, per month, uh, total of uh, twenty six thousand per year. They are in fifty four percent tax bracket and don't need these funds to live on. Uh, and because after tax, it would only uh, counts eleven thousand nine hundred sixty dollar. So we give them two options. One is they can buy, they can pay CPP benefits twenty six thousand to pay a premium uh, to donate $1.4 million of last to die life insurance policy owned by a charity and so they can leave a big legacy for that. So that's mean uh, they would get the tax seed, which would mitigate their uh, tax every year, or they can use, uh, if you, they want to have a full control of it, they can use after tax funds to purchase uh, last to die life insurance policy for 600,000 to be donated at time of death which reduce their estate taxes almost uh, by 300,000. So either way, they, uh, they are winner because the CPP benefits are really for the wealthy people. They are not really needed and is, uh, get taxed at high, highest tax bracket. 
Another strategy we use is uh, charitable giving. This is, I love it. This is something we, again, we have a, a couple that we are working there, 50 year old couple. And, um, uh, and they, they want, they love this uh, charity that actually uh, help uh, people in child abuse prevention. So uh, we, they wanted to do something for the charity when they pass away, but they also wanted to see uh, or help the charity during their lifetime. So we bought a whole life insurance policy, which pays the dividends and paid up and granted in 10 years. So that's mean that they would have, if God forbid something happened, then $1 million of life insurance policy would be donated. But because they're in their 50s and life expectancy is 85, so dividends can be paid out because the policy would be donate, uh, donated right away. The charity would be um, owner and the beneficiary. So charity would take those dividends every single year for next 35 years for the regular um, uh, regular uh, uh, giving. So that so because the charity is taking those dividends, so there's no tax to pay. Now, when we calculated almost $100,000 Total hundred thousand dollar in first ten years were donated from the same policy, and then hundred thirty eight thousand for the next ten years, and two almost two hundred twenty seven thousand from the last thirty years, and of course the last five years of their life, they, uh, the dividends were hundred fifty thousand. So almost six hundred and twenty thousand dollar worth of dividend charity enjoyed. And at time of death, they got another million dollar. Of course, they, that million dollar is uh, could be put into a donor advice fund, as uh, Glenn mentioned, that it can carry on uh, for uh, forever. So now there is a cost to it, of course, but the couple were in higher tax bracket, and uh, and for ten years, it cost them thirty five thousand after taxes uh, for every year for ten years. So three hundred fifty thousand dollar, but one almost one point six million dollar worth of giving during their life and after their uh, death. Now, this is uh, one of friend of mine actually did the same thing for uh, St. Joseph uh, Health Center and almost a million dollar of legacy was created. And we did, uh, they did exactly the same way that I just mentioned. So people do those kind of things and uh, leave a bigger legacy. Now, a lot of people ask me how much approximately would it cost uh, $1 million paid up policy last to die. So there are uh, some numbers uh, from 35 year old to 60 year old that will basically uh, after taxes uh, for 40 year old would cost almost $11,000 uh, per year for 10 years and uh, for 50 year old 18,000. Uh, so total of $180,000 for a million dollar policy that you can leave if God forbid something happened now for, for, for only for 10 years and it's a guaranteed paid off for after 10 years. Now, we do, do a lot of sophisticated stuff with our client. Now, this is something called leveraged individual front end strategy. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the numbers, but this strategy works really for, for the wealthy people. If you have a corporation or if you are in higher tax bracket, basically the idea is that you buy a life insurance policy. Uh, you know, so for example, you do some investment, say you are uh, want to do $100,000 investment for next 10 years. Rather than putting directly into investment, you buy a life insurance policy, depending on your age and health, uh, that could be three, four, uh, $5 million. Now, take that uh, policy to finance the institution like a bank, we use a few banks. So, and, and with a little bit of collateral at the beginning, you can borrow back $100,000 and now you put it into the investment. So the premiums for next 10 years, uh, almost a million dollar uh, can be put in and take out. And now the uh, financial institution will give you a pre-approval for next 10 years. So you don't have to do it every year, so in and out every year, basically. And you put that into reinvestment and make money. Because we're putting into reinvestment, the, the, uh, the interest cost and the net cost of peer insurance, you can deduct against your income. At time of death, all the liquid uh, investment gets liquidated and death benefit, which we started at maybe three, four million, now it's like six, seven million. And the whole thing will become, uh, comes out. We pay back the loan, that million dollar, because we were only paying the interest cost. And part of that, we can donate now uh, to the charity and get a tax receipt and the whole thing can flow tax-free uh, to the family. So basically you have a full control of your investment of the money 
and you have a huge life insurance policy to reduce your estate taxes. And of course, part of that you can give to charity to reduce uh, uh, your estate taxes. Fantastic strategy that we use to uh, hit all the, uh, you know, uh, not only during your life, but also after death. Now, this same thing you can do through the corporation. Corporation actually have a bigger benefit because you are doing uh, using a corporate dollar to do everything. And as you know, at life expectancy, almost everything uh, the life insurance can be can flow through uh, through capital dividend account to the state, totally tax free. Uh, now, at the beginning, might be uh, some tax uh, implication, but uh, life expectancy, everything almost goes to uh, um, uh, state tax free. Again, same, you can use that money to put it back into business to grow your business or into the corporate investment. Fantastic idea. And, but for more information, you can, of course, reach us or uh, your advisor. That's about it. Uh, you know, uh, I ran through a little quickly, but I, hopefully I was able to give you a lot of information that you know, we have a lot more strategies that we use, but these were the most popular ones. Back to you, uh, Jim. Thanks, Saeed and Cam. Um, great presentations. Um, I really enjoyed uh, your uh, perspectives on having a, a philanthropic conversation and uh, just some ideas um, as to uh, what clients can do. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of reasons for doing good. And, and when you get tax benefits, that, that certainly certainly helps. Uh, I've got a couple of questions to, to kick things off. Uh, we do have one question right now in the chat. And um, if you're listening and you'd like to ask a question, you can either put it in the chat or the question or answer. So um, I guess my first question is, um, there's all these wonderful reasons uh, of why uh, donating life insurance makes sense. Um, uh, why do you think people are hesitant to look at donating uh, life insurance policy? Maybe Cam, I'll start with you. <laughs> it's an age old thing. Life insurance people don't generally don't want to talk about life insurance. Uh, and also a lot of people don't know life insurance can be used for charitable purposes uh, because they think life insurance is uh, for protecting the family, which is good. That's what they should do. They should have sufficient for the protection of the family. But uh, because as I mentioned, the large lump sum amount, it really helps the charity. People don't think that way. So I think slowly they are coming around, realizing from what Zahid said, a lot more people are getting aware life insurance can be used. That That's one of the reasons I think as we go along, more and more people are going to think about using life insurance when they're aging population. Zahid, you have... Uh, yeah, think, thank uh, you very much. Um, absolutely. I think there, another reason is it's not marketed uh, properly by the um, ch charitable uh, organizations and also uh, the advisor not marketing probably because they don't know, uh, you know, uh, they don't bring the concepts in. So if it's marketed, I think people will listen to more. And I, I, I tell you, every time I bring it uh, with my client, they always want to know more and they want to donate. And I have got quite a few policies just by introducing, and I had one of the client, uh, Glenn uh, knows about it, we donated half a million dollar policy to uh, Mrs. Saga Community Foundation, and the client did not want to talk about anything about life insurance. And he's a you know, chartered accountant, makes tons of money, but didn't want to talk about anything. As soon as I said, would you like to leave some legacy and uh, show this concept? And now, of course, he's paying the premium and uh, the Mississauga Community Foundation is uh, the um, owner and the beneficiary of the policy. So again, bringing uh, up while you're talking to the client, uh, bring it on, I think you will have more sales. Great, thanks guys. Um, maybe I'll ask another question then we'll get to the, the ones that people uh, are asking now. Um, when you're discussing this with people, what are some of their uh, concerns about discussing this subject? Sahid, what do you... Yeah, you know, really, uh, there's no concern. They actually ask how, how much more we can do. There's really not much concern of giving. Uh, you know, uh, you just ask the question about, you know, are you a philanthropist? You know, uh, would you like to give, right? 
uh, if I show you some other way of doing it, are you interested? I, I think that's all you have to do. There's no really concern. Um, you know, if you show the way we are showing the tax saving so they can leave more for their family and less for the government, of course, uh, they always want to know more. I, I personally don't have any concern uh, of giving. Uh, I don't know, but Cam can put something up. Yeah. Okay. One of the things I was looking at is, I get that's great answers. Uh, I look, I, when I was doing planning work, I used to look at the tax return and I see that they are uh, donating a lot of money to charity on an ongoing basis. Then it comes to the point in asking, hey, it seems like that you would be, uh, would you consider, would you be interested in creating a legacy to the charity either now or through the will? Then of course they say, yeah, I never thought about it. Uh, why life insurance? Then we give the reasons what the benefits of life insurance. I think it's, uh, I don't want to call it ignorance, but people not knowing that this can be used uh, more than anything else, as Zahid was saying. But okay. once you, if they are not charitably bent, no point. But if they are, then yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so we have a couple of questions. One is from Joel. Uh, just wants a bit of clarification on the example of the charity using the dividends each year while the donors are alive, that would limit the growth of the million dollar policy as opposed to leaving the dividends to grow. Um, Absolutely. So yeah. I'll answer that because I use that example. So I'll yeah. answer that. So see the objective. Objective was that they wanted to help that uh, charity while they're living, not only when they're uh, they are gone. So uh, the objective, uh, we met both objective. They want to see those dividend giving every year because charities need money during their life, not only after their death. So uh, this way we were able to uh, take care of during their uh, life for next 35 years. And of course, after death, of course, if they would have left it there and they could have leave more money for the charity at time of death, but that was not the purpose or that, that they didn't want to that, do that. Okay, great. Um, and we've got another question. Um, when do you introduce the uh, charitable giving concept to your clients? And if might be both of you could answer that. Well, I think Zahid should start off because he's active now and I will yeah. jump in later. Absolutely. Uh, Cam mentioned a very good uh, example that I introduce usually when I review their uh, financials and their taxes, either uh, through the corporation and the personal. That's one of the time I introduce if I see something they are giving. Second, simply ask, uh, would you leave some legacy? Would you like to leave some legacy for the charity that you help? And uh, if you can leave something and you can remember forever, are you interested? Um, uh, third thing is if uh, we see the tax, for example, if they are uh, selling a business, uh, you know, that is the perfect time to uh, reduce taxes. Uh, or they are doing uh, some um, of the restructuring of the corporation um, where like, you know, they can have, um, uh, they can have a charity at that time, uh, a state freeze time and those kind of things. So uh, that's another uh, time we mentioned. Uh, third, uh, third time is uh, I don't care. I just bring it on. Uh, actually, I, when I am uh, going to charities, I am just uh, prospecting, uh, walking, and I just say, you know what, I have an idea, would you like to listen? And regarding, uh, you can leave a legacy. So then uh, it's a very good prospecting tool uh, for uh, us, or even for, uh, you know, again, the objective for us is to help charities and help the family and do good in the community. But it's a very good idea that you bring it out. Right. Yeah. To add on to what uh, Zaid was saying, and I was only doing planning. I was not actually involved in the sales, but usually I go out with the advisor. <clears throat> I bring it up and then say that, uh, yeah, you should consider uh, charitable giving. And then I provide the resource to the advisor how to do it if the client is interested. And uh, during my tenure, we had a few cases in Ottawa and other places. But uh, yeah, I think the conversation is becoming more and more using life insurance. When I was there, it wasn't that much, but I think it's getting gaining momentum now, the way I look at it. Great. Okay, I think that's it for uh, for the questions. So uh, I'd like to once again, thank uh, Cam and Zahid for sharing their expertise today. Um, this is very valuable information for not only advisors, 
but charities and individuals alike. Uh, as a reminder, there's a great deal of information uh, for advisors on the Foundation's website, as you can see, and also on the website of the uh, Canadian Association of Gift Planners. Uh, it's a tremendous resource, uh, not only for individuals, but, uh, or, sorry, not only for advisors, but for individuals uh, as well. Um, as well, if your firm or an individual would benefit from an information session, please contact Glenn and he'd be happy to arrange this for you. Um, the Community Foundation of Mississauga works tirelessly to encourage philanthropy in support of our community. We hope that you will join us in shining a light on our work and when appropriate, bring the foundation into the discussion. Glenn is happy to provide you with the information you may require. We also point to our website under the advisor tab for excellent supporting information. Finally, on behalf of the endowment committee, I'd like to thank you for attending today's session. We're pleased that you could join us and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I'd like to now bring the session to a close.